I think I may have been more excited to read this book than I was to see the movie. The Art of Frozen. Hey guys, this is Morgan Stradley with the Rotoscopers, and today I'm back with another fabulous art book review. And yes, this book is fabulous. It's The Art of Frozen. It was written by Charles Solomon, and it includes all the concept art, pre-production art, final art, basically everything that went into making Disney's Frozen. So one thing that's different about this art of book is the cover. It, normally you have all the characters or landscape or something like that, but this just features the two main characters of the movie, Elsa the Snow Queen and Anna her sister. And I think it's really interesting because in this, you can definitely see how they are, could be basically twins with different hair color. Um, I really like how you see the similarities and dissimilarities between them and right away you see, okay, this book and movie is about these two sisters. Now one thing that I love about this book, which I love about all the books, is that it's jam-packed with art. And I thought Charles Solomon did a good job about choosing different art than what we were used to. You don't really see a lot of final character models and designs, which I think is nice because I can see what Anna eventually looked like in the main movie, and I see her for 90 minutes in the main movie. I don't need to see her final character here in the book. So they kind of stray away from that and they focus more on what could have been and I really, really liked that. So the book starts off with a preface by John Lasseter and then a foreword by the movie's directors, Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee. So one thing I didn't like about this book is that it has white writing on a black background. And I don't know about you, but I find that really hard to read. I know some people are the complete opposite and they would much prefer that, but I felt that it really made this book heavy and dark. There were some pages that were white backgrounds and personally I prefer white for everything. I just love white and it seemed like a missed opportunity because this book was about snow and ice and light and then here, boom, black. So I just wasn't a fan of that. Honestly, some pages were kind of hard to read. I was reading them at night and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I can't read this anymore because my eyes hurt. But luckily, this is an art book, so there's more art than there is reading, but still, I like reading because it gives me behind the scenes and the stories and I get interviews from people involved. So this book is set up very different from other art books that you're used to. Most art books do character designs and then they do scenery and then they do renderings, whatever. This book, no, 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 no. We start off with an introduction and this part tells about how they turned the Snow Queen eventually into Frozen. So it's a little introductory about that. Then we have a prologue, which talks about how this is a family affair, how it's a family story, how they really knew they had Frozen right when they figured out, hey, let's make these two characters sisters. And then the book is broken into four main chapters, and basically these are the four categories or the four main sections and scenes of the film. The first one is the coronation, second chapter is called Wilderness, third chapter is called Ice Palace, and the fourth chapter is called Return to Arendelle. So in the prologue section, that's where they talk about how this is a family affair, and this main section has a lot of storyboards. That's actually the only art that we see in there are the storyboards throughout the film. Um, I thought that was really interesting because a lot of times storyboards get completely left out, and I think they're fascinating to watch because you can see how the characters and the, the key frames were designed before it went into animation. And you can look at these and say, oh wow, that's completely different than it is in the movie, or holy moly, that is exactly the same as it is in the movie. And I like seeing the creative process, especially the storyboards, because it is like, you know, pre, pre, pre animation. And so, you know, we have 10 or so pages devoted to seeing certain scenes and their storyboards, and I think it's really fantastic. So chapter one, yes, there are other characters like the Duke, and we get to see Hans and his horse, and we get to see the architecture of the buildings and maybe some of the motifs that go on the clothing and the architecture and fabrics. Really cool stuff, but let's be honest, the main part of this book is mostly Anna and Elsa. There's just page after page after page of their character designs and what could have been. And one page that I thought was really interesting was this one. Um, hello, black-haired Elsa. What happened? I think it's interesting because they don't talk about why they had her initially as a black-haired princess with short, spiky hair. Um, they just show us these designs and they don't really explain. They do, they say, you know, she looked very much like a villain, but they don't specifically say in the text, here's the backstory about the black hair. They just sort of say, yeah, we pushed her, her design and her design and we ultimately found uh, what we were happy with. And that's what I really love about these books because no one 
ever would have guessed that Elsa was this like dark and sultry princess. So the next section is called Wilderness and this mostly talks about when Anna goes to rescue Elsa and she goes into the forest and she's climbing up the mountain. So we see a lot of landscapes, we see a lot of Kristoff and Sven. Uh, there are some color keys in this which I think are really fantastic. And this wasn't my favorite section, there's a lot of um, you know, color studies and let's examine trees and how are the trees gonna look and how are snow gonna look on the trees. And it's really fascinating because snow was such a big part, but I personally, I'm more drawn to the characters. And I was flipping through these pages maybe a little faster than I would have if there were more characters in these scenes, but really we just see Kristoff Sven and Oaken for the most part. And, and then we go into Olaf because we do get introduced to Olaf in the wilderness. So yeah, I really liked these sections and we get to see more about Tell me more about Olaf. Like, why was he such a big deal? And the, the narrative that's written really helps you understand him. Now, one standout page is all the art devoted to the sequence in summer. That's Olaf's song where he sings about how he can't wait for summer. And this is done by Mac George, and I think they're really fantastic. I love all the different art styles of the artists. I mean, there's Brittany Lee, Bill Schwab. Uh, the art director, Michael Jaimo. I like how all these artists have very unique styles and they don't, you know, veer away from that. I mean, Michael Jaimo is very Mary Blair-esque in his designs uh, and completely different than Brittany Lee. And so I like in this book we're able to see their different interpretations of the characters and then ultimately how they all came together to create a very cohesive movie and characters and design and it's awesome. I, I loved you know, every page that I was reading on this, I just fell that much more in love with the people who worked behind the scenes making it. The next section is called Ice Palace. This is completely dedicated to Elsa and her Ice Palace and the infamous Let It Go sequence where she creates the Ice Palace. I thought it was interesting that the Ice Palace, you know, some of the different versions of it, at one point it looked very Russian, um, but then we see where where it ultimately ended up and Elsa's motif is based on a snowflake and how each snowflake has six different prongs I guess you would say and everything about her including her cape, her designs, just the way that she designs her palace is reminiscent and inspired from the snowflake and I thought that was fantastic. I mean look even at her shoes. Her shoes when she transforms into the Snow Queen our snowflakes and ice, they're totally awesome. The last section is called Return to Arendelle, and this is basically the last culmination, the climax of the movie, where they rush back to Arendelle, Arendelle, whatever, Arendelle, and they have to save it. Um, this was the shortest chapter of all of them, and I mean, there wasn't really anything new presented. There are a few things which I'm not gonna talk about because spoilers. One thing that I thought was a little weird about this is they include the art for Love is an Open Door, which happens during the coronation. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm excited to see it, that's awesome. But why are you here at the end? And, and then the book ends on Love is an Open Door, so whatever. Yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> I love this book. I have shown it to friends, I've given it to my nieces to look at, and everyone who sees it is just flipping through it and they love this book. And The Art of Frozen is a buy it. You have to have this in your collection. The art is beautiful. You're gonna look at this and think, wow, if that were a 2D animated film, it would be gorgeous. It's even, it's still gorgeous as a CGI film, but that's why I love looking at these, these character designs and what could have been and The Art of Frozen did a wonderful job. So I'm gonna give the book four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I've looked through it and read it multiple times, which is definitely a good sign. I loved this book. I thought it was magical, it was Disney, it was whimsical. I loved it and I highly recommend it. You should buy The Art of Frozen. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked my review, be sure to thumbs up and definitely subscribe. We're gonna be doing a lot more art book reviews. Like seriously, I have four right here that I'm gonna be doing right now. So subscribe for more and thanks for watching. This is what it looks like without the cover. It's beautiful, it's link green. Are you kidding me? So the Hyrule Historia is really fantastic. It contains art from 25 years of Zelda games. And uh, he could see whether it was, um, you know, the Ice Palace itself or some of the costume designs. But I wanted to just sort of give everything a little bit more of a kick, maybe, than what audiences have seen before.